What do we expect from design schools and universities? An audio blog by Martin Groschwald. I was recently invited to join a panel during the Munich Creative Business Week named Rethinking Design. The topic to discuss the changing role of designers in today's business world. Part of this discussion touched on education, which led to a lively discussion around what the role of higher learning should be in the field of design. A note before I continue. I'm speaking from a general standpoint on themes and topics collected and not about any specific institutions. The biggest debate from the panel arose around design academics versus practical preparation of graduates to enter the workforce. I will exclude internships here as they're not always a full representation. This is especially topical in design overall, but in particular transportation design, as it's usually something that is led with craftsmanship rather than pure academics. Institutions of higher education, such as universities, applied sciences, etc., do represent an academic standard and have to fight against other departments for their academic status and importance. Focusing on transportation design, or what I believe will soon be called mobility design studies, the questions we need to ask openly is how these institutions of higher education have to evolve, especially in a time where the transportation design industry is going through its biggest change in history. In a world where society, culture and politics have more and more impact on the way we travel globally, are institutions and their courses developing in line to keep pace with the changes we see around them? When I speak to higher level managers, bosses or directors, I pose the question, do you think that graduates joining you are prepared and ready to contribute once they start working here? The answer is universally almost the same. Not many and for non-creative design positions such as 3D modelers, it is even more difficult. There are many different reasons for this answer, such as too many transportation design courses on offer, leading to a higher supply than demand, little specialization in relevant topics within the industry, for example, 3D modelers, interior design, transportation, UX, non-car design, etc. And not to forget the continuous worldwide directive of design universities being run as companies rather than focusing on educating fewer but better graduates and based on taxes paid by the public. So is it the job of these institutions of higher education to get students work ready? Not necessarily. In its current form, the understanding of these institutions is much more academic than practical as they need to be comparable to other institutions. That is absolutely fine, but maybe it would need to be more helpful to have that as a part of a master's degree or even a PhD. Would it maybe be better for a bachelor's program to work as a dual system for three years in combination with the sponsor? Let's say three months of university training and three months of work with the sponsor per one semester? Could an apprenticeship potentially make a return rather than going through a university degree? Would it make sense for a further discussion to introduce an MBA for design management? With current changes in the mobility industry, but also within society, education within design and also mobility design needs to make sure it keeps up. Academically, I think this is achieved with many outstanding institutions globally. However, practically, there is room for improvement to put the thinking into practice. We will need both qualities equally and not always combined in one to achieve the goal of creating a better future. Now I was wondering, how was your experience as a, let's say, transportation design student? What did you take from your experience that you still use today? Was there anything that you could have changed or wish would have been handled differently? What are your expectations nowadays of an education within transportation design or mobility design? This is a discussion we would like to continue on our social media channels, such as LinkedIn, Instagram, or Twitter. So feel free to contact us. And as always, we very much hoped you enjoyed this little audio blog on a little opinion that we're trying to foster. All the best, take care, and we'll hear back from us soon.